in 2000, in 2007, uh, Dr. Bolo earned a Master's of Divinity degree at the Andrews Theological Seminary with an emphasis on church growth and evangelism. And then on October 25, 2014, Dr. Bolo was awarded an honorary degree, honorary doctorate, a Doctor of Divinity from the Canadian International Chaplaincy Academy, International University and Seminary due to his outstanding leadership in the community and in the church. And so this morning we invite uh, Dr. Bolo to minister to us once again as we sit at the feet of Jesus, hungry to hear a message from him today. Dr. Bolo, it's your time. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Blessings to everyone this morning. We want to say you are glad. We are glad that you are here from wherever you are joining us from. We want to say you are welcome. You're welcome to be a part of our worship experience today. We want to bless the name of God. God has been awesome. We've been having some amazing prayer section at the end of our, our morning worship. And, and I believe God is working things out and in setting his people free in delivering them and answering prayer. Um, turn with me in your Bibles to the book of John, John chapter two. Today, we're gonna spend time in John chapter two. The Bible says, in the third day, there was a marriage in Canaan of Galilee. And the Bible says the mother of, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. Um, and the Bible says, and when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, they have no wine. And Jesus said unto her woman, what have I to do with thee, my hour is not yet come. Verse five, his mother said unto the servants, whatsoever he said unto you, do it. This morning, our intense prayer moment, I wanna to speak to us on the, what I call the invitation, the invitation. And I could tell you, I could tell you just do it or just do it. In fact, I use just do it instead. Just do it. Um, whatsoever he said, just do it. Let us pray. Father, speak to us for we are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. When it was announced that Christ was to be born. And he was born. One of the things that the Bible makes very clear is that he came to save his people from their sins. He came to redeem. But I want to say to us this morning, if that was the only reason for which Christ had to have come down to planet Earth, then he would have stayed in heaven and found another remedy for humanity's salvation. But I believe when I look through the ages and throughout the pages of the Bible, I see Jesus coming to planet Earth, not just to die, but coming to planet Earth to show us a new way of life. Coming to planet Earth to let us know that there is hope in any situation we find ourselves. I also see that the reason Christ had to come to planet Earth was to took away shame and disgrace from his people and to assure them, reassure them that he is in control of everything. So, so I pause it to us this morning, wherever you are listening this morning or tonight, wherever you are, I want to say to us that Christ is everything. I love the song that says, Jesus is all the word to me. Christ is everything. He is not just a savior. He is a teacher. He is a high priest. He is a moral leader. He came to show us a better way. In fact, in John 10, verse 10, he said, I, 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 the thief cometh 
not but to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. He said, I've come that they might have good life, a better life. And I tell people, we want our situation to change. Wherever we find ourselves, whatever we are doing, we always want to elevate to the next level. And that's what Jesus came for. He came to show us that there is a better way. He came to show us that he can break every barrier, prejudice. He came to show us that in his kingdom, there was no class system. He came to show us in his kingdom that there is no separation. There is no Greeks and Gentiles that are Jews. He came to show us that, that, that we are all one under him. And as Jesus' ministry, the Bible says as he grew up, he grew up as a little carpenter in his mother's house. The Bible says in the book of Luke that his mother knew some things about him that she did not tell people, she did not reveal. She knew some things about her son. I want to say to mothers that are listening this morning to the preacher, you know, you have a way of knowing your children that even the fathers will not know. You have a way of knowing things about your children that even they themselves don't know. Sometimes they wonder how you get to know that. And, 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 and Mary knew who her son was. She was observing, she carried him. She knew how he came about. And, and up to this time in John chapter two, Jesus had not started his public ministry. He has been working things at home. I mean, he went to the temple. He taught at the temple at age 12. The leaders marvel as to who is this little boy. Mommy was concerned and daddy, they're concerned that what has happened to our son. And he said, I should have been on my father's business already. That's age 12. But now he's older. He's about to recruit disciples. He's recruiting people. Just in John, uh, uh, chapter, John chapter one, you go back. Jesus is, recruit, is recruiting, and he just recruited a few friends. And the Bible says in John chapter 2 that there is a wedding, a community wedding. You know how wedding is. Uh, um, back home, you know how wedding is in Africa. You know how wedding is in the Caribbean. You know how wedding is. When they invite 100 people, you can count that you're going to have over 300 or 600 people at your wedding. And the situation in John chapter two is that their wedding lasted for a week and, 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 and invitations have been sent out. People have been invited to the wedding. The priest, the Levite, all these people have been invited, the governors and, and everyone else, but the Bible is very careful to mention. The author says that the mother of Jesus is there. Not just that, the altar also gives another clue. The altar says Jesus, her son, is also at the wedding by, by, by invitation and his disciples. I want to pause at this moment to say that if you want to uh, 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 have prayer answer, you want to be in communication with God, you, must, you want to have peace in your life and in your home, peace on your job, or wherever you find yourself, we must first invite Christ in our lives. We must give him an invitation. We must ask him to come and take residence in our lives. The problem is that many of us don't want to give God control. We don't want to invite him in our homes. We must invite him in our homes because by inviting God in our homes and letting him take over our homes or in our lives and letting him take over our lives, it says that now he is the possessor of us. He is our leader. He stands in our defense. He stands for us. He, he, he provides for us. He takes full responsibility for us. Amen. The problem is many people don't want to. 
So they got all kinds of things they hold. People lie to them. People tell them they know their future. People give them all kinds of stories, take money from them, lie to them. They got all kinds of things they're dependent on instead of putting their entire trust in God, in Christ. This wedding is going on. The Bible says, at the third day of the wedding, it's not even a week yet. They've not gone five days. Three days later, one of the main elements that holds the wedding together has run out. The wine gone. Now I want you to use your imagination with the preacher this morning. They are sitting behind closed doors trying to figure out what do we do? How can we replenish this wine? They had a little meeting saying, now someone must have suggested, let's add a little bit of water and stretch it out so that everyone can still have, you know, the people will not recognize it. They will not realize that. Someone must have said, no, they'll shut the in, but let's go to the nearer winery and see if we can get some wine to, 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 to take care of this thing. The problem is, this is a little village, a little town, and everyone that is everybody is at this wedding. Everything in the com entire community is at this house for this function. That's how the community operates. Mm. And what's happening here is that you have nowhere else to go. So they're thinking now, okay, who can we call? The priest is there. The city council men are all there. The chiefs are there. Mm. The elders are there. But, but, but while they're trying to figure out who do we call, who do we ask to, to, to give us a solution, Mary is there. The Lutheran Bible commentary said that Mary was appearing a part of this family. And as they're discussing, she's with them. She said to somebody, call my son Jesus. Call Jesus. Yes, sir. And I could hear people in the room whispering, why Jesus? He's a carpenter. We, we, we need one. Why will you call carpenter? She said, just call my son. The Bible Please. says Mary knew things about Jesus that other did not know. You see, Mary knew that Jesus was God wrapped in human form. Mary knew that Jesus had a connection with divinity. He was man, but yet he was God. Mary knew as a baby, she held her creator in her hand. She knew that. Mm. Others did not know that. You see, you carry inventors in your home. You carry doctors and lawyers in your home. You carry plumbers and carpenters in your home. You carry nurses in your home. Do you rather recognize who you carry, who you have? Mary knew who Jesus was. And so because she knew who Jesus was, she said, call my son. And I can hear them murmuring, why her son? Yeah. Because at some point they call him a bastard child. At some point they said, we don't even know his daddy. Why her son? Mm. So when Jesus showed up, Mary said to her son, son, they need one. Now I want to pause and let you absorb this. They need one. It seems like a statement, but it is a request. Because you see, prayer is the communication we have with God. Yes, sir. Prayer is what we say to God. You're driving and you're saying, God, I've lost you. You're going somewhere. Lord, I don't understand. I'm going to see the boss. Lord, I don't know what to do. While you're having that communication, that's what we consider prayer. Mm. Jesus and his mother, the mother, listen to this. The mother did not say, son, they need wine, so please provide wine for them. No. She gave it in the form of a statement, but the statement implied that it was a request. She said, son, they need one. You know, it's like my wife in the middle of winter when it's snowing, when it's cold, and I live upstairs, and 
and, 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 and she would be in the room and, and she would look around and just say, um, you know, I'm, I'm really thirsty. She's not asking me for water. Yep. She just made the statement, I'm really thirsty. And, and I'm lying under my cover comfortably. But in that statement, it's a request saying, honey, can you give me a cup of water? And so when Mary, when Mary makes the statement or give, give the statement, which is the request to Jesus, Jesus is responding. He said unto her, woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not come. First of all, I want you to understand the request that Mary made to Jesus was an emergency request. She's saying to Jesus, by implication, if you don't do something, this family is going to be disgraced. You know how it is. People go back and say, you know, they plan a wedding and they don't have enough food. They plan a wedding and they don't have enough drinks. They plan a wedding and they don't have enough and they call all of us. You know how it is. Mm. They smile in your face and go behind you and talk about you. They, they are like they're supporting you, but they go and sit and gossip on your name. And, and, and Mary knew that, but Mary also understood that one of the reasons for which Jesus came was to wipe away shame. She said, I know, son, I know your hour has not come according to what you're saying, but, 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 but these people will be disgraced if you don't do something. Yes, Lord. In other words, Mary knew who Jesus was. She knew that Jesus was powerful enough. Even though he has not performed a public miracle, but she knew that he was powerful enough to do something and remedy the crisis. Mm. So in this emergency, they need wine. They would be disgraced if you don't do something. They need wine. The party would be over if you don't show up. They need wine. If you don't do something, Jesus, we have a problem here. And then when Jesus makes the statement, woman, what does this have to do with me? You would think that, a, that his mother would be like, you know what? Okay, son, let's let it go. But instead, look at what she said. Instead, when Jesus makes the statement, Mary turns to the seven that are standing there. The Bible says in verse five of John chapter two, that Mary turned to the seven and said, whatsoever he said, do it. Just do it. Oh, you're quiet on the preacher. Just do it. Be, 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 before Nike came up with a with the commercial, just do it. The Bible had already said it. Trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus. You see, if, if God said it, and you can believe it and know it will come to truth. If God said, Don't worry about tomorrow that tomorrow has enough of its own. If Jesus said that the birds of the air, they don't have fun. If Jesus said the lily of the valley, that they're here today and they're gone tomorrow. Don't worry about women. Don't worry about what you eat. Don't worry about any of those things. When Jesus said, believe it. In the statement in verse five says, that Mary trusted her son. Do we trust Jesus today? Amen. Amen. Do we really believe Jesus this morning? She does not argue with her son. She said to the seven, she turned to the seven. She said, just do what he said. I love what Hebrew says. Hebrew says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Friends of mine, part of intense prayer or emergency prayer is to believe the result before you get it. I wish I were listening to the preacher this morning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You don't need to wait for the answer. You can believe it when you made a request that it is so, it has been done. You can believe what he said in Isaiah 55, that his words will not return to him void. It will accomplish that which it was set up to do. You can believe what he said in Psalm 91, 
that surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his wings and his feathers and under his wings shall thou take refuge. You can say, I shall not be afraid of the terror by night or by day, the hour of the fire by day. You can say, thousand shall fall at my side and 10,000 at my right hand, but they will not come near me because yeah. I trust the Lord. Are you there with the preacher this morning? Amen, amen. If Jesus, you see, if we just do what Jesus said, we will have no need to worry. One day the disciples came and said, uh, 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 the people want their taxes, but Lord, you know we don't have money. How are we gonna pay? And while they were discussing, Jesus said, okay, let's round up to Caesar, bring a coin. He showed a coin. He said, who is on the side there, Caesar? Let's give to Caesar what is Caesar. They want taxes. We will pay the taxes. The disciples looking, yeah. okay, Lord, where are we getting money from? Jesus said, you don't understand. Peter, I'm going to create the first ATM. I have the first ATM on planet Earth. Peter, get to the lake and get a fish. And in the mouth of the fish, I, I have the first ATM. Go there. Yep. The money we need is there. I wish you're listening to the preacher. I'm saying, mm -hmm. if God says do something, it might make no sense. It might seem crazy. It might seem impossible. But if God said it, just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Amen. But the key here is that we must recognize who Jesus is. We must know that he's powerful enough that there is nothing too big for him. Yes, sir. When you pray, when we pray, we must believe that he's a God that answers before we call. Mm. A few years ago, at Andrews University, as I'm coming to an end now. One evening I came from my school work, I'm tired, I'm in my dorm room and the Lord tapped me on the shoulder. He says, son, I want you to intercede for your older sister. And I'm saying, God, I mean, I've not spoken to the girl, she's fine. But the voice saying, intercede for her. So I called a friend of mine, I said, could you please come, let's pray and forget it. We found a classroom, and you see, you can pray anywhere. We found a classroom, we went in there, we had a prayer, and that night I remember crying before the altar of God. I said, God, I don't understand, but you said I should intercede, and for whatever reason you want me to intercede this night, I remember it was 7 p.m., I said, God, you are mighty to save. God, you are a great deliverer. God, you are a healer. God, you are a provider. Whatever it is, you just do what you want to do. But I'm going to follow what you said. What I did not know was when I was praying, an ambulance had been called to pick up my sister that was bleeding internally. And by the time they got her to the hospital, when they did whatever examination and everything else, they had to run into an operation room. And the doctor said, if she had spent five minutes, she, had, she was going to be dead. But you see, I don't believe that. That's why God asked me to intercede. You see, yep. when you intercede for people, when you stand in the gap for somebody, God is mighty to rescue them. God is mighty to save them. If you pray, mm -hmm. pray and believe what you ask, God can do what you ask. If you, if you make a request, even when it's not the time, God will show up. That's what Jesus did. He said, my hour has not come. But mommy, if you make the request, not just making the request, because you believe me, mommy, because you believe that I can do it. He turned to the seven and said, bring the water pot. Pour, pour water in it. And, and when they pour water in it, the Bible says that the best why show up? Hallelujah. Friends, as I close this morning, right. if we invite God in our lives, yep. Yep. if we 
trust Jesus. You know a lot. If we make him to be the head of our homes, if we take him at his words, hey. I'm saying to you today, God will make you to ride the high places of the earth. He will make impossible possible in your life. May God help us this morning so that whatever we do, we must invite God. And part of this invitation is to tell him, not my will, but thy will be done. Yeah. Whatever you say, Lord, I will do it. But not just that, God, I'm going to trust you enough that I'm going to ask you for crazy things and I know you're going to deliver. Father, we want to thank you this morning. We want to thank you for being God. We want to thank you for the God that answers prayer. Lord, you came not just to die, but you came to show us the better way. A better way to live, a better way to act. You came to show us that in you we can breathe, we can live, we can walk, we can talk. In fact, in you we find happiness. Amen. And Lord, today we want to thank you because you, you are ready and willing to take away shame, degradation, sorrow, pain, headache. You are here to take all away if we just trust you. Yes. So Lord, you want to say this morning that we trust you. In Jesus' name, amen.